I will send to you the spirit of truth. Let us rise as we join together in the processional hymn, Holy Spirit, Light Divine. On this day of Pentecost to our worship service here at our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Jacksonville, Florida, we uh, extend a special welcome also to those who join us from many places through our live stream service. In Jacksonville, it's a beautiful day as we celebrate the gift of God's Holy Spirit which came upon the first believers and which comes to us through holy baptism. The order of service is the order of matins, the service of morning praise. May God bless us during this time of devotion. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship him. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord.
section of the beautiful Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as day, for the darkness is as light with you. You may be seated now as we join together in Come Holy Ghost in Love. through the means of grace which God has given to us, namely his word and sacrament. And so we do well now to pay attention to the reading of his word. We turn to the back of the bulletin for the readings and we thank Rob Randall for being our lector today. for this Pentecost Sunday is from Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me 
And he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me a around among them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up. And our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astounded, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling them in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, 
In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day, and it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Let us rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel for the day of Pentecost is John chapter 15, verses 26 and 27, and chapter 16, verses 4b through 15. Jesus said, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me, and you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. Now I am going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless... I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. 
When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he speak, hears, he will speak. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your You may be seated for the sermon hymn, which is actually coming before the sermon where it belongs. It is printed in the bulletin.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by his Spirit. Amen. Amen. On this Pentecost, we continue the sermon series entitled, These Things Are Written. Each week, we're looking at an appointed reading which uses the word that, T-H-A-T, to show us one of God's great purposes for his people. Today, we have seen that we are to bear much fruit and prove that we are his disciples and branches of the vine. We have seen that Jesus wants us to know, that, to know him that our joy may be full and that we are his friends. Last Sunday, we were reminded that these things are written that we might know that we have eternal life, and this eternal life is in his Son and a gift of grace. We are witnesses for Jesus of this new life which he gives. And the text for today comes from the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, uh, and Rob certainly did a great job of reading this most interesting text. Chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. Listen again to verses 13 and 14a. You shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. Let us join in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending you sending to us your Holy Spirit that we might know that you are the Lord who raises the dead and who through your Son, Jesus Christ, has given to us eternal life, life spiritually and at last eternal life physically. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have revealed these things to us through your word and spirit. And now we pray, O oh Holy Spirit, that you would empower us to go forward to proclaim this good news, that others, too, may know that you are the Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, dem bones, dem bones going to rise again. Dem bones, dem bones going to rise again. Dem bones, dem bones going to rise again. Now hear the word of the Lord. It's not the sight you would expect to have pictured for us on Pentecost, a valley of dry bones scattered across the landscape. God's people are called by many different names in Scripture. It's only in Ezekiel chapter 37 that he calls us a bunch of dry bones. That's what he called Israel. But it applies to us as well for reasons that we'll see. In his vision of the Valley of Dry Bones, Ezekiel is given a terrifically important message for people to hear that they might know the Lord who is the victor over death and who gives men and women, boys and girls, his spirit. Now the song which I quoted, Dem Bones, is also called Dry Bones or Dem Dry Bones. It's a spiritual, the melody of which was composed by Jacksonville's native son, James Weldon Johnson, who lived from 1871 to 1938. As an author and songwriter, he was aided by his brother, Rosamond Johnson. They were considered to be early leaders of the civil rights movement, which wouldn't gain prominence until the 60s. The Johnson brothers spoke out in those early years against racial injustice. They were born on Lee Street in what is now downtown Jacksonville. And uh, they went, uh, uh, James went on to become a, uh, a poet, a novelist, a journalist, an educator, a lawyer, an activist, a diplomat for his country to several different foreign countries, and also a composer. This was much to the credit of his mother, who very interestingly was the first female black teacher in the history of Florida schools, and their father was a well-known and well-respected head waiter at a downtown hotel in that early uh, history of our city. 
Now, there are several different versions of the song Dem Bones. One was made popular by the Jubilee Singers in 1928, another by Fats Waller, who uses the words the foot bone connected to the leg bone, the leg bone connected to the knee bone, the knee bone connected to the thigh bone, the thigh bone connected to the back bone, and so it goes on. Dem Bones going to rise again. When I was in high school, I sang with a singing group that often used this song, and that particular version told the story of Adam and Eve, and I'm not going to do the whole thing, but it included some of these words. Dem bones going to rise again. He took a little water and he took a little clay. Dem bones going to rise again. And it tells the story of Adam and Eve, and the chorus each time is, I note it, I note it, indeed I note it, Lordy, I note it. Dem bones are going to rise again. Now, all of these versions of the song are based on the text for today, Ezekiel's vision of that valley of dry bones. Dry bones. And that's what I'm calling you today. Know that I am the Lord as I put my spirit in you and you live. This is a picture of what happens, first of all, when the Spirit gives us new spiritual life through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. So I would imagine for most of us here today, and hopefully for many of you listening, this is what has already happened to us. A valley of dry bones, skeletons scattered across the landscape, a leg bone here, a hand bone a few feet away, a foot several feet to the right, a human skull, a skull in the center of the scene. It sounds like something that you would either see in a horror movie or perhaps if you visited Death Valley out west or the Sahara Desert. It's not a pleasing sight. Such evidence of death and destruction may not be what you expect to hear in church, but on this Pentecost Sunday, it's what we need to hear. Michael Otterstatter writes, to those who study them, bones tell stories. Anthropologists who study the history of animal life read stories in the bones they find. They may find some species uh, that have long since become extinct, and they look at their, at their bones to try to fill in the story of what happened to them and why they died out. Human bones may also tell a story if a human skeleton, he says, is discovered, the police investigators will study those bones to find out if a crime was committed or if death was by natural causes. Historians sometimes study the bones of ancient peoples to see what they ate back then or what type of health care ancient, ancient civilizations had or what activities were common. From bones, archaeologists have uncovered information about everything from ancient battles to lost farming practices to a person's sex, age, and even race. Yes, there's a message in the bones. And there's a message in the bones that pic are pictured in Ezekiel's vision as well. Even though it's at least 2,500 years ago that Ezekiel lived, the message that he has for us speaks volumes today. The dry bones in the valley, you see, were a picture of the spiritual condition of God's people, Israel. They were the skeletons. They were spiritually dead, unable to serve God in any way. Their story told the record of their sinful rebellion and of that which killed them spiritually because of their disregard for the word of God. Sin had killed them. Their sins had sucked the life right out of them. The second message in the bones of Ezekiel's vision, however, is the miracle that gave them new life. And don't you love it when it talks about the rattling? You can hear that almost as the text is read. And the bones come together, clicking and clacking, bone to bone, and then the skin covered them. It was a graphic picture, you see, of what God would do 
among his people through his powerful word and the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live, and I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and there was a sound, of, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone, and I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them. Flesh had come on them. Skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. One commentator writes, the bones that Ezekiel saw in his vision didn't have a pleasant story to tell. Now let's suppose that Ezekiel called in a coroner to de determine the cause of death of the people to whom the bones in the valley belonged. What would he have found out? What story would they have told? From those bones, he would have discovered that their diet, their lifestyle and environment led to the spiritual death of God's people. Instead of the milk and the meat of God's word, the Israelites fed on the junk food of human ideas and pagan philosophies. They starved themselves of the truth that God had revealed to them and wouldn't drink from the water of life. That he, that he offered. They chose to listen to the lying tongues of the false prophets and became spiritually malnourished. And instead of living their lives according to God's will, they flocked to sin like a moth to a bright light. Their love for sinful thoughts, words, and actions sucked the life out of them. They lived like their pagan neighbors for so long that in time they became just like them, a lifeless pile of dry bones. Does that sound like it might be speaking to us today? Who are threatened on every hand by the increasing secularism of our society. People turning away from God, no longer listening to his word, not receiving even the basic milk of God's word, much less the meat, the deeper things of scripture. Well, it was because of this rejection and rebellion of God's word that the nation of Israel, the Old Testament chosen people, were overrun by their enemies. First, the northern kingdom, 721 B.C., I believe it was, and then the uh, southern kingdom of Judah in 586 B.C. They were carried off to the Babylonians, the earlier captivity of the northern kingdom to the Assyrians. And that's why they are saying here in this vision, our bones are dried up. Our hope is gone. We are cut off. Although they ignored God, rejected God, for, forsook him and his word, God was faithful to them and he did not forget his people. He preserved a remnant and brought them back to the land of Israel where they were able to rebuild the temple, resume the worship in the temple, raise, or build up again the walls of Jerusalem which had been raised and the like. And so these words from Ezekiel 37 are first of all a clear warning to God's people then and now. And today the Christian church is the chosen people. Sadly ancient Israel rejected Christ, modern Israel the same the chosen people are Christians, all those who accept the truth of Jesus Christ as their Messiah. We're reminded in this text of the dangers of temptation and sin. We're called to repentance and faith. But in this text, we are shown also God's great purpose for us as his people that we might know that he's the Lord when he sends his Holy Spirit upon us that we might live. Dry bones, know that I am the Lord as I put my spirit in you and you shall live. You shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves. Let us know that God is the Lord for he put his spirit upon you and me when we were baptized. Through the preaching and teaching of the gospel, through the Christian words of witness that you speak, that spirit would also work in others to bring them back to life that the spirit of God might live in them. In Ezekiel's vision, even though the bodies came back together, there was no life. 
until the Spirit came upon them. And so it is when the Spirit of God comes upon a person through his word, that is when the miracle of rebirth happens. That's when people are spiritually revived. It's a picture of what God wants to do for all people. And so on the first Pentecost, we see that Old Testament prophecy of Ezekiel being fulfilled in part as 5,000 men plus women and children heard the word of the Lord and the Spirit of God came upon them and they were born anew and they came to know Jesus as their Messiah and Savior. The vision of dry bones is a picture of what happened to them, what has happened to us who believe in Jesus, and what will happen to those who hear the word of the Lord and by the Spirit's power live anew. Dry bones, know that I am the Lord when I put my spirit upon you and live, and you live. And dry bones, know that I am the Lord as I open your graves and you stand up, a great army. And so in addition to speaking of spiritual rebirth and revitalization, this text also foretells the resurrection of the dead on the last day, your phys physical resurrection and mine. It's not only a picture of what has happened for those who know Christ, the Spirit bringing us to faith by the Word, but it's also a picture, picture of what will happen on the last day when Jesus comes again. It foretells the time when the dead in Christ will be raised imperishable, and we shall all be changed. St. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you excited about that? That's the best news you will ever hear. Dry bones. He doesn't want us to be dry bones, does he? He wants us to be dry bones that have come alive through his spirit who know that he's the Lord and look forward to the day when the graves will be opened and we will be reunited with our loved ones in Christ. We are to stand up now as a great army, an exceeding great army when you consider all the Christians in this world. Now through the power of Christ, we as soldiers of the cross are to stand in the power of the spirit as the great army of God. As an army of baptized and believing Christians, we're not to give in to fear or be resolved to failure or to the demise of the church, even as God restored the nation of Israel to the promised land after the Babylonian captivity. So he promises final victory for his people, the Christian church. The church will not perish the church on earth will remain until Jesus comes to take us all home to heaven. Now, we live during a time when many people question the future of the church, wonder what it will be like for their children or grandchildren or those in later years. Even though the Church of Christ throughout history has been persecuted, in one place it has thrived, in another place it's been uh, forced to struggle because of the devil, the world, and our sinful selves. We know that the, the picture of the church is one of final victory through faith in Jesus Christ. As soldiers of the cross, we are to stand up for Jesus and give testimony to his life-giving power at work in our mortal bodies and to tell others of his victory over sin, death, and the grave. We cannot 
We must not live as spiritual weaklings or simply animated skeletons. Instead, we are to claim the promise of God in Scripture by the power of his Spirit so that we can fight the good fight of faith and share the message of his victory. Now, as God looks at us this morning, is he looking at a bunch of dry bones? or an army of faithful soldiers. Just as importantly, how do we see ourselves? How do you see yourself? God doesn't want want us to see ourselves as a bunch of dry bones, people with one foot in the grave. There's no need to call in the coroner. We're not simply spiritual skeletons. Now the Lord asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? He said, Lord, you know. Well, now we know too. Yes, they can live. They will live because he is the Lord. Now through the Spirit's power, we stand as a great army of forgiven sinners, soldiers of the cross of Christ. We stand ready for battle, come what may, eager to advance the cause of Christ and to proclaim the gospel. We are equipped and emboldened by the message that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the Lord of hosts, the King of kings, the victor over sin, death, and hell. We are no longer dry bones, but living, breathing beings animated by his spirit and dedicated since baptism to serving him and proclaiming the word. Only the Lord of life could revive a bunch of dry bones like us. Only the Spirit of the Lord could give us new life, and he has. Now, perhaps some of you are old enough to remember the television commercial from several years ago for Coast Deodorant Soap. It pictured a person barely awake, stumbling into the shower, half asleep, The man or woman would sniff the bar of soap and slowly open his or her eyes. By the end of the shower, that same person would be wide awake and ready to go. And the catchy phrase that they used in the commercial was this, Coast deodorant soap, it brings you back to life. Well, I doubt that it really did, but I know who does, who did, who will. We need not live as those who are half asleep, stumbling along through life like spiritual zombies. We need to be in the word, and we need to be out there sharing the word with others. The Lord Jesus, who died and rose again to give us new life through his spirit, will raise us physically on the last day, and that's what keeps us going. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, St. Paul says in Romans 8, lives in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who lives in you. As God's mighty army, let's stand and serve him with the sure confidence that even our bodies, when laid in the grave, will be raised up at last to his glory. O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And when I put breath in you, you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Yes, the bones tell the story in a variety of situations. They may reveal clues about things that happen during life. And in the vision of the valley of dry bones, the words have a lot to say to us. Dim bones them dry bones going to rise again. Alleluia. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. We receive today's offering.
in our prayers this morning, we would remember uh, with thanks uh, Judy Pastor's friend Connie, who is at home from the hospital and doing much better. We thank the Lord for that. We also want to continue to remember in our prayers those who have been ill in recent weeks, uh, as listed in the bulletin, uh, including Crystal Strock and family. And we would also pray for the Lord's continued help for Brenda Smith. She has returned home from the hospital, uh, as many of you know, but she will be uh, uh, needing to uh, get th therapy and so on at home with home health care coming there. So we look forward to the time when Brenda is able to join us again in person here in the sanctuary. Continued prayers for Tom Wakefield. Tom and Donna had an anniversary recently. We congratulate them and uh, encourage you to uh, continue remembering the, those on the prayer list. Today, of course, is a happy day for our congregation as we will also be going, hopefully in large numbers, to Holy Cross Lutheran Church this afternoon at four o'clock in the afternoon for the installation of uh, Reverend Dr. Leon Roberts as pastor of Holy Cross. And uh, many of you know, most of you, everyone here probably knows that he was our vicar uh, for one year and is now our part-time pastor for, a part-time assistant pastor for outreach. Uh, and this in a uh, relationship, a partnership with Holy Cross. Uh, and so we have a lot of friends there. They need our prayers and presence and encouragement. Uh, and we look forward to the four o'clock service uh, as other circuit congregations will be joining us. There's gonna be a great catered barbecue dinner following the service. Uh, he asked me to play the harp, so you're gonna have to listen to that if you come early. Uh, but I promise to do the best that I can and uh, enjoy praising the Lord with the harp. Uh, and of course, many of the circuit pastors will be participating in the order of installation as well. So we look forward to seeing you there and uh, next Sunday, of course, is Trinity Sunday. We uh, will be celebrating the truth that we worship one God in three persons. So Susan and I will be go gone uh, for several days this week, but I will be here next weekend to lead the service. And um, in the meantime, if you need any pastoral assistance, don't hesitate to call me or Pastor Roberts. Let's rise now as we join together in prayer. O Holy Spirit, divine counselor, who on Pentecost established the Christian church through the preaching and hearing of the word of truth, continue to bless this word both upon the lips of Christ's witnesses and upon the hearts of all who hear, that countless souls may trust in Jesus alone as their savior. Divine helper, we praise you as the giver of all truth and the exalter of Jesus Christ. For you have given our Lord's saving word to us sinners and exalted him in our hearts by calling us to faith. You have raised these dry bones from spiritual death to spiritual life through Christ. Thanks to you, we are now reborn through our faith. And having begun your work in us, continue it to our end when on the last day you will raise our physical bodies and body and soul reunited. We will praise you for all eternity. O Lord, therefore dwell in us as teacher and protector of God's truth, making us grow in our faith, in our knowledge of salvation, and in our love for God. Keep us from falling prey to false teaching and unbelief. Having brought us to faith and called us to righteousness, you have commissioned our bodies to be your holy temple and dwelling place. But how can you live in a house made filthy by sin or hostile to your presence through unbelief? Sanctify, therefore, our every thought, word, and deed, O Spirit of light and life. Help us to crucify our flesh with its sinful lusts and to walk according to our new man, directed always by you. Adorn our lives with the fruits of faith, thereby manifesting your presence in us. Produce in us fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You have promised to give us a greater measure of your spiritual gifts than we desire or ask for. Remind us always that we are God's beloved children by faith in Christ, so that we need never hesitate to bring all our wants, our troubles, our worries, our desires, our, our hurts and our illnesses to him for help and healing. 
We thank you for blessing Connie with renewed health, and we commit to you the continued care of Brenda Smith and others in our congregation who have been dealing with health troubles. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the great physician and that you not only touch and heal us according to your grace and mercy, but also promise us the time when the dead in Christ will hear his, the dead, those who died in Christ, will hear his voice calling them forth from the grave, and our bodies too will be raised. Filled with your grace, may we have the boldness to witness Christ's saving name to an unbelieving world, calling out to dry bones to hear the word of the Lord, to repent and believe the gospel. Because our bodies are your temples, our sins must grieve you deeply. Do not on their account abandon us, but pardon us for Jesus' sake and strengthen us in our faith through your Holy Spirit's power. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer. Let my cry come to you. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our closing hymn is not from the Pentecost section of the hymnal, but believe me, Onward Christian Soldiers is all about the power of the Holy Spirit to enliven God's great army in this world to go and share the gospel. We sing the hymn.
Go in peace. In the power of the Spirit, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.